Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling is in I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this case, it's not so much What's Bubbling is Zim, but hey, what's bubbling with Adobe Animate CC, formerly Flash. We've done an export before from Animate into Zim through CreateJS. And this time we've noticed that that has changed a little bit. The, 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 the format of the, the exported files have changed a little bit. So let's go through that again. We come into Animate CC and there's HTML5 Canvas. That's the type of document that we want. So we'll open that up. And then we can use the amazing Adobe uh, drawing tools, for instance. We'll uh, create something spooky. How about that? So I'll take that. And now with Adobe Animate, you can just grab these edges like so and, and bring them in. Uh, if you don't have the whole thing selected. Uh, how does that look? Is it spooky yet? Ooh, maybe. Uh, yeah, good, good enough. <laughs> Yes, then we'll uh, flip that around a little. Ooh, do, 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 oops, missed. Oh, um, let's do, 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 do. oh, I'm such a good drawer. We'll put a head on that. Let's put a head. What color head? Hmm, let me see. Uh, how about a pink head? That's an orange head. Pink head. Pink head. The pink headed monster. Ooh, pink headed monster. Uh oh, I've drawn that on the same layer. Do you see how that cuts that out? Which actually looks kind of neat. I could undo that if I want to. Uh, lots of undos. Uh, but tell you what, we'll just cu uh, we'll cut that. Control X. And we'll make a new layer now. And Control Shift V. Like so. Now we may or may not. Um, want that, but if you want to not cut it out, you could have put it on a, for a different layer in the first place, and then it would leave the other shape in behind without cutting it out like that. But cutting it out is a feature that's kind of cool at times. All right, there's our spooky character. Yikes. Oh, is it ever spooky? Now, I would recommend moving this. You could build it here, but the thing is, when we bring it in, it'll probably be easier if we just kind of keep it right up there in the top left corner. Then we know it's a zero, zero, and we're going to be given a width and a height. Okay, if we wanted it center ridged, you could, or even if you want to center it, so you're going to rotate it or something, the easiest way would just be to do that. Now there is a way to set the anchor point of the canvas. I haven't really played with it. You click on the canvas and go in here and say advanced settings, and there's the anchor point. It might have some effect to it. I don't know, like I said, I haven't uh, seen that before, so. Maybe it's been around for a while. But anyway, there she be. And then we save this. File save. And we can call it spooky. Spooky. And dot FLA. And now, once it's saved, we can then publish it. So don't publish it before it's saved. It just saves it to some temporary file somewhere. And, you know, publishes there. That's useless. So make sure you save it first and then publish it. And then we'll go into Atom, where we've got a fit template here, a Zim fit template. We're going to bring it into that. But if we take a look at the animate folder over here, there's spooky.fla, and here's spooky.html. So we'll open that up. That's made for us, and a spooky.js. Spooky.js is where all the shapes are stored and stuff. And, and then uh, here's what the HTML page looks like if we open it in a browser. And you can see that. Uh, it looks like what we expect. Spooky, isn't it? All right, but we don't want to use that HTML. We just want to go into it and grab the, the necessary code to put it in our own uh, template. All right, so they've added some more things in here. There's an init function right here, which runs when the document is loaded. So down here on load call init. We've got some containers, but we don't need to worry about it. We're going to use our Zim frame and, and stuff like that. So inside the init, they set up for their containers, but they also have these two lines. And these two lines are what we need right here. Uh, Adobe and get composition. And what they've done is they've hooked it up to an ID. So in the JavaScript here, we'll open up the JavaScript down somewhere. There it is. Uh, 
is an ID. No, that's not it. There, that's an ID. Okay, so our animation compositions where we've got this object here and this is one of the properties in the object and so from the other document we can access an because it's provided uh, to us as Adobe Animate basically is the equivalent of an and uh, then that compositions uh, by, by the ID we can get the stage the library the sprite sheet and the images and we're using get library which returns this lib. And before we used to have access to the lib, we could just say, hey, give me a new lib.spooky, and, and that's all we needed. Um, now it's kind of all hidden inside here, so it's, it's hidden inside this, uh, this module pattern. There's our lib as a local variable in there, and to be able to get at it, we have to go through that animate ID. And that's all right. That, that's probably just them solidifying a bit of structure there. So now it would work with multiple different flash files. You could bring all those into one HTML document without having a problem, and you know, that kind of stuff. And so that's fine. So here's our lib. On the lib, we've got other things that are stored. It looks like they're going to prepare us for bringing in fonts and stuff like that. But what we really want is the stage content here. And that's lib.spooky. So by giving us a new lib.spooky, we'll get everything that we had on the stage in. It's just we have to uh, be able to get access to that lib. And what that is, is shapes. So the shapes are made with these special uh, encoded uh, paths, I guess. Um, and that's really cool. Uh, that's the same as before. And we, if we want, we can just grab the path and put it on our own shape. And I'll show you how to do that after. But for now, let's see how to grab all of that stuff that was already put together. Another thing to note in this area here is the nominal bounds where we're given the width and the height of those shapes. These values here are a little bit awkward. They're kind of, they seem to be just pointing to the center of the stage. Here's the stage width and the stage height. I would have thought that, that that's maybe a glitch or something like that. And so if you were to move your shapes over 50, it would add 50 to these values here. So I've, I've got a request in or an issue in at um, CreateJS to see if that is indeed <laughs> on purpose, <laughs> and if so, I don't know quite why. But anyway, uh, we can certainly use the width and the height. So let's um, get to it then. We come back to Spooky here. We grab the two lines that we need right here. So copy those. This is available for us. So we're going to go get that ID, and, and therefore it gets the, the get library function. See how we've used the get library function to access the lib. So we copy these two things. We go into our HTML code. You can put these anywhere. We'll just put it at the start of our, our code that we're typing. Uh, we also need to grab the spooky JS file though. So if we want, here it is right here. We can take a look at how they did it in the spooky.html. We just bring in the script spooky.js. We come back here and just underneath where we bring in the Zim and the CreateJS scripts, so CreateJS and Zim, we'll call in the spooky.js there. Okay, so down here, now we can access it directly by saying, this is a bit bigger for you, we can access that directly by saying var ghost is equal to a new lib dot spooky. Just too bad we named our file with lowercase by convention because now it looks like a class is lowercase which is optimal in my mind. So that gets us our spooky and this is a CreateJS object so if we wanted to we could use some CreateJS stage dot add child ghost like so. Uh, but this doesn't have any of the Zim. Let's just see if this works. And we open a browser. And there's our ghost. Okay, that's come into the Zim template. But this doesn't have things like dot drag. Well, actually, we can't chain on the add child. So that's why in Zim, we sort of flip that so that we can start chaining right away. Um, 
but it's not a Zim object, it's a CreateJS object. To turn that into a Zim object, we Zimify. Zimify, like so. Okay. That Zimifies it, and so from then on, we could center it on the stage, for instance. Uh, or we can choose the add to. So let me just show you the add to for now. Add to stage like that. We can dot drag it like so. So now that it's been zimified, we get the zim methods that we can use. And uh, for instance, the pose as well. So dot pose a 100 comma 100. Okay, and we come here and refresh. Now it's a zim. Oh, <laughs> it's a zim object, but interesting. Uh, that's as expected. Uh, those are in two parts, and so the drag will drag things inside of a, a container. I guess that's like a movie clip. Okay, so uh, if we don't want that, if we don't want the drag to do both of them, although that's that's cool, let's uh, indent or bring down and indent these a bit, and then we can say current target colon true. The current target true means treat the whole thing as what we're clicking on. So it's the same as when you have an event. If you put an event on a container, for instance, uh, if we click on something, we can ask for the target, and then that's the, the thing inside. And indeed, when we drag a container like that, it will drag the thing inside the container, unless we say the current target. The current target is what the event was put on. So if we clicked on it and asked for the current target, it will tell us you know, the whole container rather than the thing inside. So we're using the same word or whatever. <laughs> it's the same name there as, as a parameter name. It's not really my fault. It's an awful name, current target. Like, what the heck? Um, but uh, whatever, we put up with it. So now we set that to true, and we save that and refresh here and now we can drag the whole thing the current target is the whole thing all right great now if we were to center it though so let's just comment that out and we will center it on the stage like so let's take a look and see what happens we refresh oh that doesn't look centered so what's going on here um Maybe what we can do is we'll center it, and then we will, oh, oh, we couldn't outline it. We'll try dot outline, like so. Uh, normally, that will put an outline ar around it. But if we look at the console here, it says, Zim methods outline, please set bounds on object. We can't outline something that doesn't have bounds. So that's the issue. This doesn't have bounds on it. So we have to, unfortunately, do this in two steps. We can't chain the bounds. Maybe could provide a chainable bounds thing. But anyway, we can't do that. So that means we have to break this up into two. We can zimify it, or we don't have to. We can zimify it after, but whichever, it doesn't matter. So now we go ghost.setBounds which is not chainable. So we'll do that in a step and then we'll come down here and we're back to ghost being chained. But our set bounds, we need to specify what they are. So that's a zero comma zero comma. And then from back in spooky here, uh, right here, these two numbers. So in the nominal bounds, this gives us the width and the height that we want. Let me put those in there. By the way, if we take these two things and put them in there, it just does not work at all into here. Uh, we know it's up in the corner, so zero, zero. That's why we're sort of concerned about those two numbers. So we save that and we refresh here. And now our outline is showing and now it's centered. See, now that it knows what the bounds are, it's able to properly center this on there. Uh, like so. By the way, the bounds are a snapshot in time, so they don't move with stuff, but uh, that's great. We have to position, we don't have to outline, and I guess we'll just bring that up like so. Okay, isn't that cool? Now, oh, well, you know, we don't have to drag, we could do something else to it, for instance, dot transform. <coughs> And we will make it so that we can double click it. Double click, colon true. We have to turn that on specifically. 
We'll refresh that here and refresh. These are transforms which do happen to move and we can transform our shape now uh, like so. And double click to type. Cool, there's our spooky shape. Now, what if we wanted to bring in only one of the shapes or to start treating them uh, our own like pick and choose or, you know, whatever. Um, operate on them specifically, that's fine too. What we can do is just go into Spooky JS and go right into find this P value. So layer one, that was our spooky shape. So we go dot P and we copy this like so. So I'm copying all of that dot P. Could actually copy more, but I sort of like just go into the P there. And then we come back to the index and we say var shape is equal to a new shape. So this is a Zim shape, at which point if we wanted to, we could put in the width and the height there. It's quite going to be the width and the height, is it? So when we do that, that gives us a shape with that width and height. And then on the graphics, shape.graphics, dot fill, we'll make a fill, how about white, frame dot white, or you could put in quote white, and then we dot this P to it. Uh, we would then say shape dot add to stage, and dot pose, whatever, 200 comma 200, semicolon. So we made our shape specifically from that one shape that we got from the path. So that's a path parameter that was set up, I think, by CreateJS and Adobe to make a nice short value for the, the path. I mean, that's great. I, I, I love that thing. You know, that's not very much for a vector drawing, is it? Yeah, that's cool. So let's see if it works. We refresh here. There's our original one, and here is now the, the, the white shape. Let's just make sure that the bounds are working on, on that shape. Um, properly. So we can dot outline that, dot outline, <clears throat> like so, and bring it in here. Ooh, no, they're not. So the shapes themselves have their X and Y in the, in the middle of it, and the, the registration point is there too. So in other words, some of that X drawing is negative and some of the Y drawing is negative. So we need to move our X and Y over when we create this uh, by half the width. So we'll take that and put it in here and divide it by two and half the height. We'll take this, copy, put it in here. So all this can be a little bit confusing, I'm sure, until you do it a few times. So we've moved the X, we moved the Y over, and we then um, keep the same width and the same height. So we save that and refresh here. It refreshes. Oops, wrong way. Minus that. Oh, I forgot. Minus those two things and refresh here. There we go. So, oh, sorry, the zero, zero is still here, but we start drawing our shape at, at back over on the left. Okay, yeah, all is good. And there she be at 200, 200, our custom shape brought in, or just bring in the whole thing like this and zimify it, all right? In the one case, we have to zimify because what's coming from the library is a CreateJS object. We zimify it to add all of the zim, center, transform, drag, etc., all of those methods to it. In the second case, we're making a new zim shape where we can pass in the bounds here and carry on and uh, collect the shape itself. But just note that to make the bounds go on it properly, we uh, have to realize that that was drawn at the center. So we need to move the starting X over. So in other words, this is the X of the bounds and the Y of the bounds right here. And note that it's negative. The X right here, or this cross, sorry, the cross means zero, zero. The round circle is separate. That's the registration point. You can adjust that on its own. But this cross right here is zero, zero. So we have to start drawing negative and negative. And that's just how it was done in, in Adobe Animate, uh, or how it was uh, arranged by CreateJS and Adobe Animate. We just need to deal with it here in our shape. 
Excellent. That is what's bubbling at Zim, and indeed what's bubbling here at Adobe Animate. Remember that when you make a new file, File New, that you want uh, to choose HTML5 Canvas. And you don't export anymore. A while back, a long time ago, you used to export it. Now you just say Publish. All right, and we can publish directly to our uh, HTML page here and our JavaScript. When we need our to access the library, we have to take these two lines, <clears throat> which gains us access to the library inside of here. We take those two lines and we put it in our own file. So there they are right there. We have to remember to bring in the spooky.js. So three things, bring in the spooky.js, access the library, and then we're back to where we were before, where we can create a new lib. We need to zimify that as we did before. And then we're on our way. Excellent. I'm Inventor Dan Zen here for what's bubbling at Zim. Good luck with that. Have fun. Ciao.